We are going to check out a brand new feature from Adobe that promises to quadruple the number of pixels in a photo. It's called Super Resolution. Let's see if it's any good. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech In March of 2021, Adobe launched a brand new feature for Adobe Camera Raw called Super Resolution. This one-click Super Resolution feature uses artificial intelligence and machine learning to basically make details that are in your photo appear that were never there to begin with. The result of applying Super Resolution to your photo is that it will double the horizontal and vertical resolution of your image. So for example, if you have a Fujifilm RAW file that's 6,000 by 4,000, and then you super resolutionize it, you will now end up with a new image that's 12,000 by 8,000. Let's take a look at some examples. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that you cannot yet access this feature in Lightroom. When it is available, what I hear is that they are going to put it in the develop module. It's only available in Adobe Camera raw. So the way that you access this feature is either via Photoshop or Adobe Bridge. Adobe Bridge is sort of a file browsing organizing software from Adobe that comes with the Creative Cloud subscription. Here's a straightforward way of applying super resolution to a photo that you already have in Lightroom. Find the photo that you want to apply it to. Now if you're on a Mac you can right click it and say show in Finder. Either way you want to actually find the raw file on your computer. For example, here's the raw file right here. Then you can simply open that file with Photoshop. When you do that, before Photoshop opens, Camera Raw will open. You see that right there? And normally you would just click open, and then if you do, right, it will open it up in Photoshop. But don't do that yet. You actually have to apply the super resolution in Adobe Camera Raw. So what you wanna do is once you get to the Camera Raw screen, right click the image and select Enhance. Do you see that? That will bring up the Enhance Preview dialog box. Now in here are two checkboxes. The first only really applies if you're using Fujifilm files. And if you do happen to see it, I would recommend checking that box. Now the one that really matters is right here, Super Resolution. Go ahead and make sure there's a check in the box and then simply click Enhance. And you'll see right down here that it's working on it. You see that right there? And if you click on it, it gives you a really unhelpful dialog box that just says processing with no time remaining. But I will tell you this, it uses a lot of memory. You can't do anything else on your computer while this is processing. This computer right here is a Mac mini with 32 gigs of RAM and it's still really slow and takes about two to five minutes to process the file. Once it's finished processing, you will see an additional photo that's been added. Added. You see that right there? And if you look up here, it will have enhanced attached to it and you will see that it's converted it to a DNG file. And right away, they look pretty much the same, but have a look at this down here. Here's the original Fujifilm file. You see that right there, the resolution for it? Now look, here's the resolution for the new super resolution DNG file. It literally doubled the resolution. Now, obviously a hundred percent on the original raw file is not as close to the bird. You see that? And now look at this, 100%, you are a lot closer, there's more detail. And honestly, I'm not seeing that much of a difference. Okay, zoomed in at 400% on the original Fujifilm file, now I see a definite difference. Have a look at that. Look, there is way more detail here. There's just more pixels to work with, so it looks sharper and it looks cleaner and it just looks better overall. This is pretty impressive at 800% on the original RAW file. Look at that, something to keep in mind, if you don't have a Fujifilm RAW file and you try and open, say, a JPEG in Photoshop, say from Lightroom. So for example, let's say right here I have a JPEG, I right click it and I say edit in Photoshop. That will not open Camera Raw and you will not be able to apply the super resolution to that JPEG. So if you're in Lightroom and you have a JPEG file and you want to apply that, you know, super resolution to it, go to the file, right click 
click it, show in Finder, find where that file is. What you wanna do is you wanna browse to that folder in Bridge. Use the program Bridge. Bridge is located right with your Adobe products. If you use Adobe products, you'll see Bridge there. If not, you should be able to download it as part of your Creative Cloud subscription. So if you open Bridge and you browse to the folder that contains your JPEG files, then what you wanna do is in Bridge, simply click on one of the JPEGs just like that, and you can right click it and say, open in Camera Raw. That will open up Camera Raw, but for the JPEG. And then from there, same thing, right click that, select enhance and you're good to go. So that's how you can apply super resolution to any kind of JPEG. Simply open Adobe Bridge, browse to the folder that has your JPEGs in it, and then open that photo that you wanna work on in Adobe Camera Raw. Okay, in this example, I shot the Atlanta Braves. Let's see if the super resolution can bring out any more detail. And obviously the new super resolution has been bumped up to 12,000 by 8,000. So zoomed at 100%, I really don't see a whole lot of difference. Even at 200%, I'm not seeing a whole huge amount of difference on this one. And as you can see from 800%, the original Fuji file looks worse. So yeah, it definitely cleans up the worms a bit, but at what cost? Here's the original Fujifilm file that's 50 megs. Here's the enhanced one that's 361 megs. That's over seven times the size. Speaking of Fujifilm RAW files and Lightroom and worms, let's take a look at another image. I shot this image on an X-T2 and it is a Fujifilm RAW file. Photo on the left is the Fujifilm RAW original photo on the right is the enhanced version. And at 100%, really not too much difference here. Jumping into 200% now, and I think 200% may be the sweet spot for this. There's a little bit of those lovely Fujifilm worms right here. Not so much right here. This one looks a little bit better. It would be good to play around with the sharpening and other sliders to see how that gets affected on it, but with no adjustments at all, this is what it looks like at 200%. Here's 800%, and as you can see, the foliage in the background, which traditionally causes problems with Fujifilm RAW files and Adobe, it definitely looks better. Look at the difference between this area and this area right here. Before I give you my conclusion, let's look at a file taken from a camera that has only four megapixels. So I shot this one in 2005 on an Olympus C4100Z camera. So now we're looking at a four megapixel file. The photo on the right is the original four megapixel file. The photo on the left is the enhanced super resolution version of it. Okay, zooming in at 800%, have a look at this. Interestingly, the enhanced version looks pixelated here. You see that right there, right there, almost the same. Now it looks like there's less pixelation around the edges of certain areas. It's almost as if the artificial intelligence calculator in this feature seems to look for certain areas of the photo like puddles or certain shapes and it applies it there. It did a great job with this. You see the difference between these two? But right here around this sign, the edges of this sign, not so much. Now this feature is really difficult for you to see in a YouTube video and to really look at online. You almost have to print it out large, right? But I did make a quick test print of it. There seems to be a little bit more detail in the enhanced version. But honestly, I'm not seeing that much difference. And again, I mean, this is kind of a silly test. I would really need to blow this up very large. And I do think that I would notice more of a difference. So who is the super resolution feature for? What would you use it for? Well, the first use I would think would be archived photos. Photos, you know, that you've taken many years ago with cameras that didn't have the high megapixel count that they have now. I think another application it could be good for is if you're shooting birds or something way up far away and that's as close as you can get. And you happen to have that one awesome shot, but the bird is really far out in the back and you want to zoom in and crop and then blow that up to a larger print, yes, I definitely would recommend super resolution for that. Also keep in mind that it makes the file sizes huge and it ties up your computer for anywhere from two to five minutes while it's processing. So bottom line, I think this is a very cool new feature to add and I'm sure that over time, Adobe is going to continue to improve upon it. That's the thing 
about artificial intelligence. It just keeps getting smarter and smarter and better and better at the job that it does. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. If you have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, be sure to check this out. It's very cool. Just remember that you cannot do it from Lightroom. You need to do it from Adobe Camera Raw. Use the technique that I showed you in this video. In the meantime, I will see you in another video again real soon. Take care.